Hey guys, welcome to day 26. Today we are gonna talk about testing. What is testing? Well, it's how we know if our functions are actually working. So far we've been using print statements and exceptions to see if the output of a given method is correct, but we can actually make formal tests to prove that our algorithm does what it says it does. How do we do this? Well, let's open up our old binary search tree project by opening NetBeans here. And it's gonna you know, load up and we are gonna go into our binary search tree project and add some tests to prove that it works like we think it does. If you do not have this project, you can download it from the link down below. Once you have it, we are gonna add some stuff. And so I'm gonna go to file and open project. And now we're opening it all up and we are actually gonna add something called unit tests to prove that our program actually works. Unit tests are tests that check if each independent unit of the program works correctly. This will make more sense in a minute. So in our you know, binary search tree, you know, our non-empty, our empty BST, so basically what we did here like a couple of days ago was we had this tree interface that said like, okay, we're gonna have these methods in a binary search tree, whether it's empty or not empty, we're gonna have an is empty method, cardinality member add. And then we are gonna have two classes, our empty BST and our non-empty BST. And these two classes are gonna implement tree and they're gonna be able to hold anything with our D generics. And they need to be, whatever's like in our tree needs to be comparable. So that way we know whether to put it in like the left or the right subtree you know, that type of stuff. And so now we have this thing. We have a lot of methods, but we don't know if they actually work. So that's why we need unit tests. For example, if we go down to our add here, we want this function to take an item, add it to the tree, and then return a new tree with everything in the original tree that this function was called on, plus the element. This type of, you know, the thing I just said, you know, the stuff all about like what it takes, what it's gonna output, you know, what it's supposed to do, that's kind of the specification of this method. We want this method to literally add something to the tree. The fact we wanted to do that, that's the specification. We are literally specifying what the method is supposed to do. If the method does what we, you know, want it to do in the specification, then the method is correct. That's how we know the method is correct, if it actually adds something to the tree. This sounds really obvious, but I promise it's super, you know, important and subtle and yeah. <laughs> So how do we prove this? How do we prove that this add method is doing what we you know, say it does? Well, we have to create a test that tests if the method does what the specification requires it to do. So let's make a unit test for is empty. And to do this, we are gonna create another class in here. So we'll click on our package, do control click, do new, we'll create a new class. And this will have like kind of all of our testers in it. So we'll just call it testers and have it load up in here. And we, if we go back to our non-empty BST, we are gonna wanna check if, you know, is empty. This is the unit test that we are gonna create. We are gonna create a unit test that tests if is empty does what it's supposed to do. If the tree has nothing in it, it should return true. If the tree, you know, has stuff in it, it should return false because it is not empty. How, do, like, this is super simple. Like, how do we even test if it's correct? Like, I mean, pretty obvious. Well, there is a way. So let's just create a method in here and we're gonna go public, static. Um, this will return void. We'll just have it, you know, print out something or throw an exception if something's wrong. We'll get to that in a second. And we'll call it check is empty because this is gonna check if our is empty works correctly. And so in this method, we are actually gonna give it a tree T. And so it's gonna, it could be an empty tree. It could be a non-empty tree. That's like the whole point of what this thing is testing. So a way we could test this is like if the tree T is an instance of empty BST, then we know the tree is empty and it has nothing in it. And so is empty, like called on T, should return true. And so if the tree is an instance of empty BST, then it is empty. And so when we call is empty on this tree, it should return true. Otherwise, if the tree T is an instance of non-empty BST, then we know the tree is not empty and so is empty should return false. This is another way of looking at the is empty method. Now let's try coding this. If we do if T, and we're gonna use instance of here, which we used a little bit in the past, but we're using it again here, it's important. And so if T is an instance of empty BST, 
then we want to check if is empty is true. If it is true, then all is good. If the tree is an instance of empty BST and is empty returns false, that's a problem. So we'll say if t dot is empty and notice it pops up because in our tree, you know, interface here, we have is empty as a method. We don't implement it, but in our two subclasses we do. And so it's all good because we said it's a tree here. It's an instance of VST, everything is good. So if it is empty, all is good. So do we want to print out system dot print out blah, 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 blah. Okay, all is good. Um, the tree is, em is an empty BST and it is empty. There you go. Then we can do else if T is an instance, instance of non-empty BST and we don't put a space here. We can do those and then we can say if T dot is empty and if it's not empty, then we can system.out.println all is good. The tree is a non-empty BST and it is non-empty. There we go. That's a method that is testing if our tree works correctly. Now we can actually check if this method works by running this test inside of our runnable class. And so right now our runnable class is right here, it has the little, you know, arrow play button to it but if you ever want to change that I guess if like right here basically it has a little play button because this is where our main is we could put a main in another class and then just do blah, 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 click run file but we don't have a main in this and so that's why we have to do it in here so yeah in here we are just gonna make some binary search trees run this thing on them so we'll do empty BST e equals new empty BST, you know, all is good there. Then we'll do non-empty BST, n equals new non-empty BST, and we'll just give it the value five. That'll be the root, it's two subtrees will be null. And then we wanna actually run this is empty test that we just created inside of testers. And so because this method is static, we can just do testers dot check is empty, cool. And we can do E, then we can copy this, blah, 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 do that, and then put n in here, and then we can run the class and see all is good, all is good, it's running. Here we go, all is good, the tree is an empty BST and it is empty, that is true because we ran it with e, and then it is non-empty, non-empty BST for n. So this is good, but imagine if you wanted to test like a thousand of these trees, like you kind of copy and paste these lines, a bunch of times, pretend that they're different trees, but if you had like five billion of these things, blah, 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 blah. And they can be on the same line as long as you have a semicolon. And so we play this. Now we have a bunch of stuff in this console, but none of it is errors. We literally have to like go in here and like make sure everything is good. And we could add print statements in here saying like else, something is wrong, blah, 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 or else something is wrong for the different test cases. But that's not necessarily what we wanna do. So basically, we're getting print statements whenever it is correct, but that's not necessarily what we want because when it's incorrect, we don't get anything. That's not a good way to test this. And so if we delete all of these guys, or we can, yeah, we can keep these guys here. Let's change the system.out.println. Let's change it to an exception that is thrown when it's something goes wrong in the program. So if we say, if T is an instance of empty BST, and we'll actually bring this guy back so that we can copy and paste our little message here. And so we'll say, if T is an instance of empty BST and it is not empty, then we have a problem. So we wanna throw a new exception throw an error because something's wrong with our program. And we'll say all is not good. The tree is an empty BST and it is not empty. Non empty, there you go. That's a problem. And then the same thing goes for here. And so we'll copy this guy. And so we'll say if it's an instance of non, like if T is an instance of non empty BST and it is empty, then that's a problem because the tree is a non-empty BST and it is empty. And that's not how our trees work. And now this is gonna have a problem because we have to 
throw um, throws exception. We have to clear. We have to declare the fact it throws an exception. We could do a try catch here, but we actually wanted to throw the exception if there's an error because we want our program to stop and we want to be alerted like, oh, there's a problem. I need to go and fix this test case. And so if we go back, blah 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 to here, and we're going to have all these problems. <laughs> Look at all these errors, oh, all of that red. Um, and it's because we have to throw the exception up here as well because throws exception. So we know we'll get it in the console if there's an error. And so now if we play, we get no print statements and we don't have to look at anything. We will just know that nothing went wrong because an exception was not thrown. Does that make sense? This is super, super subtle and super important. We just created a unit test that checked if is empty works correctly. And so far, we, it does. We attacked the logic of is empty from a different angle to prove that it worked correctly. Is this the best way to test this? We could create unit tests like, you know, our check is empty for every single method inside of our non-empty BST. We could create, or really inside of tree, we could create like one for cardinality, one for member. Yes, these unit tests are nice, but we can further prove that the methods do what they are supposed to do by testing them in relationship to one another. We could test if is empty and cardinality work together and that if the tree is empty, the cardinality must be zero and vice versa. This is much stronger than just unit testing. It's testing if our functions work in relation with one another. And if we decide to change, like if we had a test that had is empty and cardinality working together, you know, testing that they work in relationship with to, no one, to one another, if we change cardinality to do its methodology in a different way, we could see if it affected is empty. And then we would know, okay, we just changed something in cardinality and now it's affecting different functions in the program and that's a problem. Therefore, if we decide to change one of our functions, we'll know if the change functions has any side effects and disrupts any other parts of the program with this type of relation testing. And that's what we will be doing tomorrow. <laughs> and so that's it for this video. The Hacker Rank Challenge is down below in the description. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video. I hope you learned something and I will see you tomorrow.